Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here, looking at Command 6. We're look, coming out of a book called The Shepherd of Hermes, um, the second book of Shepherd of Hermes called Commands, and we're all the way up to Command 6. Now this one is talking about that every man has two angels, right? Every man has two angels and of the suggestions of both. Now, one of the things that, that, that jumps out me every time I think about this is, remember the old cartoons where they always put um, the two angels on the on the guy's shoulder. You had the the good angel that was always in white and looked like he had a, he looked like you know he had a uh, had wings. And then you had the bad angel. He was always had a pitchfork and was red and he was he was, looked like the devil or whatever. But turns out this is actually kind of true. You know, it says we have two angels and we're on the, of the suggestions of both. So imagine these two angels on your shoulder as we go ahead. Let's look at them. First of all, let's call on for a little help. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you would use all communication pathways so that we may understand these two angels that are with us and that can, we can use, um, we can even use them for our benefit. Your Lord, let us understand so that we can uh, practice and apply this into our lives. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. Command one, I commanded thee, said he, in my first commandment, or my first commandments, that thou shouldest keep faith and fear and repentance. All right, talking about, he didn't, not the first command, but the ones before the whole, um, the anger. Remember, we talked about anger in, in five, and it was kind of like a turning point because he, he made it clear that, you know, if we could, you know, do anger, if we could get that one right, if we could conquer anger, then we would, you know, have a chance of conquering the rest of these. So it's kind of like a, a mark there, kind of like a, a separation or a line of demarcation between the earlier commands and the latter commands with, with anger being something to do with it in the middle there. But he said even in the first ones, you know, he talked about faith and fear and repentance. Yes, sir, said I. He continued, but now I will show thee the virtues of these commands, okay? Okay, so now we're going to see the virtues of the command. Sound like we're not actually going to get another command, but the virtues of them. Well, let's go on. Then thou mayest know their effects, how they are prescribed alike to the just and the unjust. Now, this is where we get our, our kind of our little, you know, um, little snappy little saying that we teach virtues is because, you know, Hermes actually teaches virtues, right? He's going to show us uh the uh what does he say is may I know the the effect he's not even gonna tell us what the virtues are but he's gonna show us the effects of the virtues and how it's described alike to the just and the unjust so he gets in really good detail here verse three says do thou therefore believe the righteous but give no credit to the unrighteous for righteousness keepeth the right way but righteousness the wicked way now is this a command he telling us that do thou therefore believe the righteous but give no credit to the unrighteous yeah it is a command don't give no credit to the unrighteous is what he's saying for righteousness keepeth the right way but unrighteousness the wicked way do thou therefore keep the right way and leave that which is evil for the evil way has not a good end but has many stumbling blocks okay talking about the the rugged path Remember he said it there the way to salvation is straight and narrow, but there are many, many, many other paths going in many, many other directions, but they, they are of no, no good end. They have stumbling blocks. It is rugged and full of thorns and leads to destruction, and it is hurtful to all that such as walk in it. You look at anybody that's trying to find one of these other paths and look at all of the troubles that they're having in life. And we know that thorns has something to do with um, business or finances or, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's, 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 not a, it's not good to be in that way. Verse 5 says, But they who go in the right way walk in evenness and without offense, because it is not rough nor, thor nor thorny. Okay, those that are on the straight and narrow path. Thou seest therefore how it is best to walk in this way. Thou shalt therefore go, says he, and all others, as many as believe in God, with all their hearts shall go through it. Okay, now, Believing in God, you know, that's 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 a word that, you know, it needs more clarification because there's a lot of people who think they believe in God. Yeah, I did stop right there for you to think about the fact that I said think there's a lot of people who think they believe in God, but they don't know who he is. You know, we, we did a class up here, you know, um, taking the Lord's name in vain. But we don't know who we don't know who, who the Lord is. We did another class up called the Book of the Covenant. You know, we don't we don't really know who who the Lord is. You know, so so we have to, you know, you know just say because the person believe in God that they got all of this. You need you need you need some more need some more study.
at least at least some more you may have already gotten it already i'm not challenging your spiritual walk but i'm saying there's a lot of people you know saying i i believe in god and, and they, they have no idea they shall therefore go says he and all others as many as believe in god with all their hearts shall go through it and now says he i understand first of all what belongs to faith there are two angels with man, one of righteousness and the other of inequity. So what this is telling us is that, you know, we have two angels with us at all times. We have a good angel and we have a bad angel and they're trying to they're trying to influence our lives. Right. They're trying to have influence, just like the old cartoon where, you know, the devilish dude is, you know, he's all in the ear. And the other guy, the, the guy with the, the halo or whatever, he was like, hey, uh, you should be listening to me, not him. And I said unto him, Sir, how shall I know that there are two angels with man? Here says me and I understand because we can't see them. There's no way to know until you get the hermits. You have no other than the little cartoon suggesting such. You have no way of knowing that such things really, really exist. Verse 9 says the angel of righteousness is mild and modest and gentle and quiet. OK, so this is the angel of righteousness, mild, modest, gentle and quiet. When therefore he gets into the heart. OK, so he's going to come and try to get into the heart. Immediately he talks with thee of righteousness, of modesty, of chastity, and of bountifulness, forgiveness, charity, and piety. We always find ourselves in, in a good way, especially us that do a lot of, you know, fussing and carrying on. You know, when the, when the angel of righteousness gets inside of our heart, we can feel it because we feel like being nice. We feel like being patient, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you can actually notice something's going on there. For the ones who are not familiar with Hermes, you know, command, you know, six, they may not know what's going on there. But I'm saying you do you do notice that you want to do something good. Ten says when all of these things come into the heart, know that the angel of righteousness is in thee. So when you feel like doing good, when you feel like doing something for somebody else, when you feel like what does it say? When you feel modest, you know, when you feel chastity. And your bountifulness and forgiveness and charity and piety, when you feel those, it's the angel of righteousness. That, that, that's no, it should be really easy, right, to understand that. Wherefore, hearken to this angel and, and to his work. So listen to him. When you feel this, when you feel that he is taking over, now you start listening. Now, now you start embracing him. Now you're like, hey, okay, well, I like this guy in here. Let's keep him in here. Let's look about the other guy. Learn also the works of the angel of inequity. He is, first of all, bitter and angry and foolish, and his works are pernicious and overthrow the servants of God. OK, so no, so see how he's opposite. He, he he's he, this guy is he's the bad guy. And when therefore these things come into the heart, when you start to feel this stuff in your heart, anger or bitterness or foolishness or perniciousness. And let's look up from perniciousness for People like me that don't know what it means. It means maliciousness or wickedness, evil, mal, mal, ma malevolent, I believe it is. Uh, malign, malign it. I don't know what none of these words mean. Anyway. Bad. <laughs> Overthrow the service of God. Where, when therefore these things come into thine heart, thou shalt know his works, that this is the angel of inequity. So when you start to feel this way, hey, you start need to start noticing um, because, he, he, you know, at going back to the last class we did on chapter five, how, you know, bitterness and anger, you know, they, they can start to harm me. So we really have to be on guard. It says, um, and I said unto him, sir, how shall I understand these things? Here says he and understand when anger overtakes thee or bitterness, know that he is in thee. Remember how closely tied anger is to bitterness? So you have to look out for either one. But when you start feeling yourself being anger or bitter, know that he's in you. He's already there. He ain't taking over you yet, but he is there and he's trying. He's trying to take care. He just, he just got to work his little magic. And he's got to work his magic, you know, do, do anger and what folly, then bitterness. Then what was the, what was the other one? Um, uh, anger, then fury. You know, he has he is certain steps, but, you know, and you have to play along with him. So if you can get ahead of him and stop it, you know, you, you can do just that. But you got to get ahead of him. Thirteen. And also when thou desire many things. OK, now here's some ones that, that may not be so so obvious. But when the desire of many things, right, when you want stuff and the best meets, yeah, you know, all of a sudden, you know, what I'm saying you feel the need like you want you want some extra that you, you know, ain't really used to. You know, like like my wife holler out. She want a hamburger or something. 
I'm starting to look at her, you know, I'm starting to look at these other stuff. Is she truly hungry? Is she getting a whiff of the McDonald's over there across the street? Or is, you know, the angle of inequity starting to take over? So I started to look for these other stuff, you know. Don't, don't, I won't just take that one. I need some other stuff to go by, like many things. You know, all of a sudden she, she feels the nerve to get drunk or, you know, that, that's definitely it. My wife want to stop at a liquor store. Yeah, I know some spirit that took over and it's probably inequity. He said, when the love of what belongs to others, right, so, you know, it kind of like covetousness. I don't, I don't necessarily see it as stealing per se, but you know, you 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 looking at the other person's stuff, and you're like, I want some of that too. Pride, pride, you know, in what you already have, and much speaking. Now, this is my trigger point here, you know, because I know I I I I, I talk for a living. That's what I do. You know, that this is what I'm doing here. This is what. But now, my you know, the people around me, as you can imagine, they get a little tired of it sometimes. You know, they 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 you know. They, it's constant. It's 24 hours a day. You know, I'm not putting on a show here. This is this is what I do. I speak about the Lord all day long. But then when I start to notice people around me and they start, you know, stop paying attention and looking for the opportunity to take care of other stuff and all of this. And I, I say, well, I might be talking too much. But then when I can't control it, guess what? When I, you know, I say, well, I need to shut up. But then I find myself five minutes later still talking. Hey, it's the angel. It's the angel of it's the angel of inequity. He's trying to get a hold of me. And I can see him in there. Much speaking and ambition. Right. Now, you start to see you're not so satisfied with what you have now. You want to achieve more. You want to you start to become ambitious and like these come upon you. So you really have to study these things and see how the how this what does ambition look like in your life? What does much speaking look like in your life? If you're an extremely quiet person, you know, one or two sentences might be a whole lot of speaking for you. So you have you have to apply. But and the reason why is so you can see this angel trying to take you over, because if he gets you, he's not going to do good things to you once he has you. Verse 14. When therefore these things arise in thy heart, know that the angel of inequity is with thee. Right. So you look for him. And when you see him, you start to try to back him off. Seeing therefore thou know of his works. Depart from them. Like I say, you start to try to back them off. Start to try to be quiet. Start to try to, you know, pray and meditate or find out what the problem is and get away from it or whatever. And give no credit to him. You don't want to give any credit to that bad angel. He's going to try to destroy you. That's his job. And he's very good at it. Because his works are evil and become not the servants of God. You know, he he's the guy that's working with the other dudes. You know, those ones who think it's, you know, more wise to be wicked, more wise to be evil, more wise to do dumb crap. Well, that's their best guy. An angel of inequity, he's the guy they look forward to. You know, they hate, you know, the angel of, of righteousness because, you know, he tells them to be humble and meek and they don't want nothing to do with that. 15 says, here therefore thou has, here therefore thou has the works of both these angels. We always got the both, we always got both of them. The question is, which one are we going to allow to drive us? Understand now and believe that the angel of righteousness because his instruction is good. So you believe that guy because his instruction is good. Remember, they're, having to ha they're trying to have an inf influence over so they're telling us to do stuff. They're telling us to be mean. They're telling us to do, you know, do bad things. Whereas the angel of righteousness is telling us to do good things, telling us to be patient. You know, so 16 says, for let a man never be so happy. Yet, if thou thoughts of the other angel arise in thy heart, that man or woman must need sin. Now, I don't know if I understand this. Let a man never be so happy. Yet, if the thoughts of the other angel arise in his heart, that man or woman must need sin. I still don't understand, so let's go. But let man or woman be never so wicked. If the works of the angel of righteousness come into thy hearts, that man or woman must needs do some good. Okay, so now I understand this a little bit better, but what does it say? Let it let you be not so wicked that you know you can allow the angel of of um, of uh, righteousness take over every once in a while. That's what it sounds like. You know, don't don't be ever so wicked. But then what does the other one say? Then don't be so happy. Yet if the let a man be never so happy. Yet if the thoughts of the other angel arise in their heart, that man or woman must needs be I don't know what is it saying be so happy as in you forget about everything and you like um you know I could deal with the angel of inequity if he shows up you know because he's, he's going to make you sin is really what he's going to do I don't know if I understand it yet but I'm going on verse 18 thou see if therefore how it is good to follow the angel of righteousness now in summary we got these two things they're going on daily they're going on minute by minute but which one do we follow so we try to follow the angel of righteousness 
of righteousness. If therefore thou shalt follow him and submit to his works, thou shalt live unto God. Now here this word is again, live unto God. He's going to give some clarification on it, but I just want to want you to point it out because he, he uses it here as an unnecessary or unimportant phrase, but turns out it to be the big a big thing. What does it mean to live unto God? And it's as many as shall submit to his works shall live also unto God. Okay? All right, y'all. So we're moving along in this thing, talking about the two angels. Now we're up to um, command seven, which is not to fear the devil. And we'll be talking about that next. All right, y'all. Um, the two angels, Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue. 